Hey everyone. A while ago I had the idea to create a series that detailed how to get better at Clone Hero through the means of explaining how each pattern is performed, as well as tips and tricks on how to improve your overall ability along the way. Now that I'm a bit more experienced in terms of gameplay and understand the concepts of improvement a bit better, I feel I'll be able to better explain the nuanced details that build the core foundation for improvement in really any game that you want to improve your skill on drastically, though more specifically in this case, Clone Hero. This isn't going to be your standard to hit a descending triplet tap like this tutorial series. Instead, I'm going to give you the formula to work out yourself instead of handing you the solution. That way you more firmly understand the full concept and will be able to guide yourself forward rather than relying on tutorial videos. Think of this more as a tutoring session and not as a cheat sheet. To start with, the first part of the tutorial series is going to cover five basic prerequisite ideas that should be taken into consideration when working towards overall improvement. Without further delay, let's get into it. Number 1. Outline Reasonable Goals What this means, in layman's terms, is to give yourself a set of achievements that you want to reach in short-term, overall, and long-term. For instance, my short-term goals right now are an FC of Solus 4, Dee's Meal, and Panger 125, and I hope to get them within this month. My overall goals are to improve my abilities in more categories of skill that I'm lacking in, such as strumming stamina and speed. My long-term goal at the moment would be Solus 5, which could take a very long time, and it's not something I'm focusing on every single day. Short-term goals give you something to work towards whenever you start your play session. If your best accomplishment so far is a passive through the fire and flames, a nice short-term goal could be to get 5 stars on it. Overall goals is something that you take a step away from the game to recognize and process. For instance, if you can only downstrum accurately, an overall goal could be learned to altstrum accurately. Long-term goals are things that you know aren't feasible under your current skill set, but it's something that you want to work towards. By using your overall goals and working towards them, you'll come to find that long-term goals become much more accessible over time. Number 2. Stagger your playtime. Now that you have your goals in mind, the way the brain programs itself to remember how your muscles need to move in order to perform certain actions is a process of trial and error. Through visual and physical reception of what happens when you miss notes, and what happens when you hit notes, your mind will automatically adjust itself in the future to begin doing the correct motions more consistently. However, there is a catch. The brain cannot keep up with a consistent play schedule. And believe it or not, it's actually more efficient for your mind's gameplay recognition to play for shorter time frames than longer time frames. If your arms start to burn, or if you start to get cramps, that's a good sign to stop the play session and start another time. Your mind uses the down period of not playing between play sessions to burn the muscle memory into place, but it can only do so in periods of complete rest. If you play for longer periods or stress your muscles out, your body will take a longer time to recuperate and therefore have less time to burn the muscle memory. So when in doubt, take a break. Number 3. Get a catalog of songs that challenge your specific skill set. Luckily for you, you're playing in 2019, a time where there's a multitude of different songs out there that can challenge your current skill levels on a game that allows you to slow down or speed up songs that are either too easy or too tricky for you. I'll give you a couple examples. If your overall goal is to improve your strumming stamina, use Chorus, find the link in the description, to download some strummy songs, such as Rewind by Leprous, The Holy Mountain by Slice the Cake, The Violation by Flesh God Apocalypse, or Pillars of Mercy by Absu, the list goes on. And if you don't know what specific songs challenge what skill set you're wanting to work on, ask the dudes and dudettes in my Discord, they're always willing to help someone out. By cherry picking the songs you play during your session that pertain to the skill that you want to work on, you give yourself a good path to take in terms of working on those specific skills. Number 4. Take self-improvement days. Not every single day has to be a grind day, and you don't have to work on your next big FC all of the time. On the days you're not working on those accomplishments, you can either play songs in your skill range to relax, or take a self-improvement day. As outlined before, having a catalog of songs that challenge your current skill set is a great place to begin. For instance, I recently took a day to work on strumming stamina and speed. During the entire play session, I would bounce between playing runs of the way it ends on 140% speed, or tapping speed intensive sections, and then taking small rests between to regain stamina and restarting. Not a lot of players do this sort of thing, and it's why people fall into plateaus and stop improving for extended periods of time. The thing to note about self-improvement days is that it's less about the time frame that you're playing in, and more about the level of challenge that you're giving yourself. If something you want to play is blatantly beyond your reach, it's more smart to play something that's just barely out of your reach. For instance, don't start off by trying to play Solus 4 as someone who can't pass through the fire and flames. Try passing through the fire and flames again and again until you get it. Number 5. Avoid Cheese this one is less self-explanatory. Clone Hero is a very, very loose engine in terms of input reception. You can press an infinite amount of random buttons between two hopos and still hit the hopo afterwards with no worry. The thing is, spamming does not improve any skill set that's worthwhile. 
If you don't understand a method for a specific section, smacking as many buttons as you can to cheese an FC will not personally grow your skill set. In fact, it hinders many of the accuracy-based functions of higher tier play. It's why there's many people out there who can FC universes but not through the fire and flames. If you fall into the pit trap of cheesing accomplishments, you won't be able to get out. If you're thinking you're okay with that, remember that no member of the community will ever find one of your accomplishments impressive unless you actually learn what you're playing. If that doesn't bother you, fuck, I don't know, just don't spam if you can help it. I think that's all I'll cover for this specific video. It's a good resource for the very basics of improvement in this game, and before you learn 500 different types of tapping methods, these core ideas need to be understood. Hope you enjoyed this specific video, and if you want me to make more like this, leave a like. For now, have a day. Yeah, I don't know either. Subscribe!